look at that. Neat. Yeah, but look at this airplane. That's what I'd like to make. But you can't work for NASA if you're going to build airplanes. Why not? Because NASA explores space. That's why. Well, they do other things, too. Like what? Well, I don't know. Lots of things. Maybe I can answer your question, boys. You're right. NASA does do lots of things. That means it has a wide variety of different projects. Do you work for NASA? Mm-hmm. But I don't work directly with launch vehicles or even with aircraft. I'm a biochemist. And you work for the space agency? Yes. My job, like thousands of others in different fields of science, engineering, and management, we all help in the overall big program of NASA. You see, boys, when Congress created the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, let's see now, that was uh, in 1958, they gave NASA the big job of bringing together the talents and the resources of our great country, from government, from industry, and from the universities, to form a very, very competent research team. Now, that team, it includes about 36,000 NASA employees today, has as its main objective its biggest goal is the peaceful investigation of space by manned and unmanned space flight. Direction for the many programs of our national space effort originates from top management and in five program offices at NASA headquarters in Washington. Only a small percentage of NASA's employees are in Washington. The real body of the space agency's capability to perform missions are the 12 NASA centers. These centers conduct research and development programs and provide effective management for the large number of complex technical projects which are carried out by American industry and by our universities. The center responsible for the development and management of a broad variety of unmanned Earth orbiting satellites, communications, weather, and a long list of scientific satellites is the Goddard Space Flight Center located in Greenbelt, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. This center was named for Dr. Robert H. Goddard, a pioneer in the development and testing of rockets. The knowledge he gained through his failures and his successful launches became the basis of modern rocketry. At the Goddard Space Flight Center, more than 60 satellite projects are in the various stages of design, development, and operation. These include such orbiting scientific laboratories as the Explorer series, the Interplanetary Monitoring Platform, the Orbiting Geophysical and Solar Observatories, the Nimbus and Tyros weather satellites, and the new family of applications technology satellites serving weather, communications, and space science, all aboard one satellite. You may also have heard the Goddard Center mentioned during many manned and unmanned space missions. Goddard is the nerve center for the global communications network, linking all of NASA's tracking stations which are located around the world. NASA's newest facility is the Electronics Research Center, Cambridge, Massachusetts. The personnel of this center conduct research in miniaturized electronic components and related fields for application in space and aeronautics. The successful operation of spacecraft, rockets, and airplanes depends to a great extent on their electronic equipment. These components are used in the guidance, navigation, communication, and other systems of all these vehicles. Problems of re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, supersonic and hypersonic flight, and space environment investigations are some of the projects carried out at NASA's Langley Research Center. One of Langley's most successful projects is Lunar Orbiter. A number of these spacecraft have orbited the moon and taken thousands of photos of the lunar surface. Located near Norfolk, Virginia, Langley's comprehensive facilities include numerous laboratories and 40 major wind tunnels. The tunnels have been used to test the design of space vehicles, the supersonic transport, helicopters, low-speed aircraft, 
and the Scout launch vehicle. The Lewis Research Center, Cleveland, Ohio, is NASA's primary center for research and propulsion and power generation. Chemical rocket engines have been improved by Lewis personnel through the use of static firing tests and other experiments. Electrical or ion propulsion systems, as well as nuclear propulsion systems, are being developed. Electrical propulsion systems can deliver thrust for months or years, using only small amounts of fuel. When perfected, they could well provide the continuous thrust needed to reduce travel time to distant planets. Nuclear rockets are tested at the Nuclear Rocket Development Station in Nevada. This is a joint NASA Atomic Energy Commission facility. The principal concern of the station is advancing nuclear systems technology, particularly through Project Rover, the name for America's nuclear rocket propulsion program. The X-15, which has soared to an altitude of 67 miles. Other NASA aircraft are tested at the Flight Research Center, Edwards, California. The XB-70 airplane is another craft being developed and tested by NASA. Research flights at more than twice the speed of sound are providing useful information for our nation's supersonic aircraft program. One of the strangest craft being tested is the lifting body. This vehicle achieves aerodynamic lift from its very shape. It is a forerunner of future spacecraft, which may be flown back to Earth and touched down on land. Not too far from Edwards is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is operated for NASA by the California Institute of Technology. JPL's primary mission is the development and management of unmanned lunar and planetary spacecraft. The Ranger, which gave us the first close-up photographs of the moon. The Mariner, which traveled millions of miles through space to photograph the planet Mars. And NASA's highly successful Surveyor lunar landing spacecraft were developed here. JPL operates NASA's worldwide deep space tracking network, which enables them to control the flight of deep space and lunar probes. Gemini 8, this is Houston. I have your phase adjustment over update. If the manned Apollo lunar landing will be controlled from a similar room in the manned spacecraft center, Houston, Texas. All of the manned Gemini flights were also controlled from here. Delta T, 1 plus 0, 7. Okay. Yaw, 0. Pitch, 0. Going right over the coastline now. Roger, uh, 8, core 25. The Manned Spacecraft Center is the home base for America's astronauts. They prepare their minds and bodies for the rigorous ordeal of space flight in many ways. They experiment with maneuvering devices, which are designed to aid an astronaut working outside the spacecraft. Specially constructed spacecraft simulators are used to practice Earth orbital missions, as well as the lunar voyage, including landing on the moon. Strenuous exercise is normal for these men, for the physical condition of the astronauts while on the ground or in space flight is of critical importance to the manned space program. A large medical team which conducts NASA's aerospace medicine program works with the astronauts throughout all phases of the program. The development and testing of manned space vehicles is another function of this center. The three stages of the Apollo spacecraft undergo rigorous inspecting and testing before being approved for manned space flight. Well, boys, does that give you an idea of the variety of projects that NASA's engaged in? Yes, but you forgot to tell us about the Saturn rocket. Joey, you know where that's made, Huntsville, Alabama. That's right, at the Marshall Space Flight Center, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Home of the Saturn, Jupiter, and Redstone rockets. Marshall is NASA's largest center, and its engineers have designed and developed the largest launch vehicle in the world, the Saturn V. 
The first few Saturn booster stages, like other early Marshall vehicles, were built and tested at the center. Production of the Saturn V booster, or first stage, is carried out at NASA's Michoud facility, just outside New Orleans. The second and third stages are built in California. About 50 miles east of Michoud is the Mississippi test facility. Here, most of the Saturn stages go through static firing tests. After the stages pass all static tests, their engines are inspected and reconditioned and shipped by barge to NASA's primary launch facility, the Kennedy Space Center, Florida. NASA chose to build the Saturn V facility to the north of the Cape on Merritt Island. The various stages of the Saturn V are received here, taken to the vehicle assembly building, where they are checked out and then assembled to form the 365-foot Apollo Saturn V. When this vehicle carries three American astronauts on their lunar voyage, the feat will be a tribute to the skilled work of thousands of our nation's industrial firms and to the personnel of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win.